Hello, this is Chris Billier from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and this is a mini video showing you how to use Blue Hill 2 to do a stress relaxation or creep test. I've already balanced my load cell, so it says approximately zero here, 0.4 newtons, and I've put my safety stops on so my grips will not hit. I have tensile grips on an Instron 5544 machine, which is a screw driven mechanical, electromechanical testing machine. I also go up here in my load cell after I've already balanced it and I can set the limits. I've enabled them to the plus or 2,000 newtons that uh, the load cell max and min. So we have electronic and mechanical safety stops. So what we want to do here is we want to do a ramp and hold either in stress, strain, force, or displacement. And in standard tensile test, we can do a ramp to a force or stress or displacement or strain, but then the test stops and no further test data is taken. We can also do a ramp and hold as part of the pretest, but the data is not saved during this either. So Instron has a special type of test, which we go under methods. You can browse for it. And under shared documents, under Instron tests, we have Blue Hill, we have templates, and there are called Instron examples. And there, further under Blue Hill, we can find the tension relaxation test example. So again, here's the full line of folders and I'm going to pick the tension relaxation test example. I want to save this as something else under our folders. So under, I happen to be doing this for this course, so I can do a tension stress relaxation or creep method. I don't want to save over the template. I could also do this in Profiler, but that uh, requires a bit more work. This has a lot of special features in it. So the first we do is we open our folder like this. We can do the same things we do in other tensile tests. I encourage you to look at the videos for regular tensile tests. We can pick our units, our put in different samples, a layout. I actually like having two graphs. Our specimen, we can have it select or we can select it during the test. I'm going to use a rectangular sample for my tests. Different kind of inputs. Now here's the important thing under control you can do extension, tensin, tensile stress, strain, load. I'm going to leave it under extension control because it's a very robust on this machine but you could do load control. There's going to be a limit on how fast you can do this, and it'll give you an error if you're outside the range. So 2,000 millimeters per minute is outside the range. So 1,020 is the most you can do. So I'll pick the max. Ideally, you would go infinitely fast in extension for a stress relaxation test, or infinitely fast in stress or force for a creep test, but that's going to be impossible in reality. And this is a screw driven machine, which is going to go pretty slow compared to a servo hydraulic machine. Now depending on whether you want a stress relaxation or a creep test, you pick the extension or load you go to. So I'm going to go do a stress relaxation test and I'm going to ramp to a certain strain. And the hold value will be well, I'll ramp it using extension because that's very robust, but I'll ramp to a strain of 10%. Now again, if I wanted to do a creep experiment, I would go to a stress, say 1 megapascal. I can still do it under tensile extension, which for a screw driven machine is very robust, but I could instead ramp at a certain tensile stress 
uh, control and I can run this under tensile stress control of a certain megapascals per minute. The t extension rate is set on the machine to a maximum. The stress rate depends on the stiffness of the sample. For a stiff sample, you get a higher stiff, higher stress rate than on a compliant sample. Again, I'm going to do tensile extension at 1,020 millimeters per minute, which is the fastest the machine can go. For stress relaxation, I'm going to go to a strain. And I decided I would go to 10% strain for this. So that's the most important thing is what rate you go and where you stop for a test. Now the end of the test could be any number of minutes. In this case, it's set for 16. You can set it for longer or shorter. The longer you go, the more chance you're getting the full relaxation response or full creep response. Generally, for stress relaxation, uh, you have to go less time than for creep. And it all depends on the material, on how fast it relaxes or creeps. And these will just stop after a given amount of time, or you can have stop and return. Or you can stop the test manually. The other important issue here is data. This test automatically is going to take every 50 milliseconds. But in the beginning of the test, when you're running very fast, you may lose data. So to guarantee you get as much data for the peaks, so you don't lose the peaks, you can also take data every so many newtons. Now this machine's accuracy with the 2,000 newton load cell is of 5 newtons, which is 0.25%. But we could also put lower numbers, we just don't know if those are fully accurate. So this will now take every 2.5 newtons and every 50 milliseconds. Now if we go 16 minutes every 50, 50 milliseconds, that's a lot of data points. 20 per second times 60 seconds per minute times 16 minutes. So we have thousands and thousands of data points. So I'm going to change that to a much lower number and do it every one second, but knowing that I'm going to catch my fast data using my load channel. After the test, you can use post-processing, such as in MATLAB, to thin the data. My strain channel here is extension. I can do many calculations in this, such as maximum load or hold preset time. You can play with these. What I'd like to do is know what my force is at a few times, a few time points. Um, what I don't see on here is maximum stress or maximum strain. So I'm going to go to absolute peak and add one. And it has tensile extension, but I'd rather have my tensile strain at max, which should be 10%. But I know this machine will overshoot a bit. And I also can do absolute peak for my stress. I'd like to know what my maximum tensile stress is going to be. And that just comes out in my results. All this data will be saved if I um, request that it is. So what's going to show up in my results? At those places where I said to do calculations, it can provide the data. What it doesn't have is my maximum stress and strain that I just asked for. But it shows up here because I put it in calculations. So I can have that at the maximum tensile strain, give me what the tensile strain is and what the tensile stress is at the maximum tensile strain. You could also do it at the maximum stress. They should coincide. Then we can graph the data. I'd like a double y-axis graph so I can see my force and displacement over time. I have load, and I'd like to have extension and load shown there. And I'd like to have not two red lines, so I will change lot two to blue. And I'd like another graph, which will give me also a double Y. And my X data, again, is going to be time.
and my y data this time is going to be stress and strain. I'm not worried about a stress strain graph here. I just want to know what stress and strain my sample goes up to, which will calculate it for me. And again, I like having my plots red and blue rather than red and dark red. Now it's very important for post-processing that you save the data and the data will come out as time extension load. We could also add stress and strain, tensile stress and tensile strain on there if we want, but we can calculate that afterward of course. And reporting out that res I'd like my re results table to be printed out, but very important I want my raw data to be saved so that I can do my analysis, post-processing analysis. And we can have it prompt us at different times in the test. I'll have it prompt before the specimen with uh, dimensions to put in and what rate I want to go. Again, I'm going to go at the fastest rate, but I could have that the user change that. And I want to save this. As I saved before as my creep method, go back to Blue Hill to do my test. Go into my test. I select the same one I was on before. Give it a name. It's my name, leather stress relaxation. As I mentioned, I've already balanced the load, so I don't do that again. I have to get my dimensions, so I take off my safety stop. I add my pre tear load of 5 newtons. About five there. You can see it's already relaxing. And I get my dimensions. It's 94 millimeters long. The thickness is 22 millimeters, well, actually, one millimeter. And my width is 22 millimeters. Again, my rate's going to be the maximum this machine can do. I make sure my safety stops are in place. I make sure my safety shield's in place and I'm wearing my goggles. And I can run this test. Now uh, it ramped very quickly. The extensions in red ramped very quickly. It did overshoot here. And the force shot up and now it's relaxing. Now we have to be careful because because of this overshoot, the stress also overshoots and we have to compensate with that for that in our post-processing. That's force and displacement versus time. Let's see how close we were on our stress train control. And here we have our stress train control. Stress and strain in uh, blue and red. And red is our strain. It was supposed to go to 10%, but it shot up to over 10.5% and then came down and our stress came down. And this one will go for 16 minutes, but I don't have the time for that. So I am going to stop it. It's going to return. And we can look at our data table. And it doesn't have a lot of the calculated features because we didn't make it to all of these different times. But it tells us our max load. And I had asked it for our max tensile strain. Went to 10.3% and max tensile stress here almost two megapascals. And it calculated our relaxation load, how much it relaxed, 14 newtons. So that's the end of our stress relaxation or creep response. I will mention one more time, we go into methods here. We could have done, instead of a stress relaxation, a creep by going under control, still go under extension, but now my control mode, I would change from tensile extension, or my whole criteria, from tensile strain to tensile stress. And I can't modify this right now because I'm already testing samples. I'd have to go out and start a new sample.